Amen. Can anybody celebrate the love that Jesus has for us this morning? That God loves us with an everlasting love. Doesn't matter what we do, he continues to love us, whether we love him or not. That's the kind of love that we celebrate this morning, that in spite of who we are and what we've done, he continues to love us. The Bible tells me so. You can look in the Bible and see how he cares about each one of us. Bless the name of the Lord. Scripture today from uh, Philippians, the second chapter, beginning at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found, found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. How many know Jesus is Lord, y'all? Hallelujah, and according to the Bible, every knee one day is going to confess it. Hallelujah, and every knee is going to bow and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our Father and our God, we bless you this morning. We praise you and give you glory and honor for just another day that you have allowed us to get up. Another day that we are able to see your glory through nature. And we just come to magnify you and give you praise this morning. We thank you again just for another week's journey. From last week until this week, you kept us. You've been the provider. You've been the healer. You've been the deliverer. You provided for us. And we just want to say thank you. We praise you for the portion of health and strength that we have. And, and even in the midst of, we still declare that you are still our healer and we just bless you. We are waiting on manifestation right now in the name of Jesus. We praise you for being our joy, that you have been our hope, that you have been our encourager this week. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming along beside us and being the comforter that we needed you to be, that you've been our helper. Hallelujah, you've been our wisdom and our knowledge that we needed this week. And so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, we thank you for being the supreme sacrifice. And even as we celebrate your entry into Jerusalem for this week, we praise you that you did give up your home in glory to come down and live among us and show us that it's still possible, hallelujah, to walk with God and still have communion with God. So we praise you, invite you into our service. Come, Holy Spirit, and fall fresh right now. In the name of Jesus, where we are weak, make us strong right now. In the name of Jesus, that you be our joy. Hallelujah. In the midst of sorrow, we praise you that whatever we need, we can find in you. And you said if we ask you, you would give it to us according to the word and according to your will. We thank you for your provisions. We thank you for being who you are. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya. He is the King of Glory. He is wonderful. Amen. He is full of wonder. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. He is full of awe. Amen. We're, we're blessed to be his people and the sheep of his pasture. It is good to see you this morning on this Palm Sunday as you triumph. If you do not have your palm, raise your hand. The ushers will take care of you before you leave. But I'm excited for each of you. I'm excited for the goodness of God to see the glory of his presence upon your very faces. It is good to see Brother Eric. Amen. Where's Eric? I was looking at him. Brother Eric, home from the Air Force. Amen. Stand up, Eric. Amen. 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 Eric was never a full-figured young man, but I think they've slimmed him and tightened him up even a little bit on top of that. Amen. The military will do that to you. Um, I'm going to make an announcement on Thursday. This is very important. On Thursday, we're going to have Holy Thursday service, a Marty Thursday service here at 7 o'clock. Seven o'clock sharp, I need to meet with the music folk a little bit after church. And um, got a couple of guest speakers, um, um, Pastor Anthony Washington, going to do about 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper in a certain way, and we're going to do uh, Sister Saretha Washington. We're going to do another 15 minutes, amen. And we'll see what the Lord says from there. But Thursday... And uh, in person, will be streamed live, but I would love to see you live here. Amen. Amen. The streaming live will take care of itself, but we want us to come together live. Amen. 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 So, so sacrifice during this holy week that we could come together on this occasion. Amen. Thursday, with respect to holy week, is the night before he was crucified where he instituted the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, with his disciples, with the washing of feet. And so if you want to prepare your hearts and minds for that, read that section in the Gospels. Amen. I won't tell you where to find it because it's just easy enough to find it anyway. Just, just search through every book until you find it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God, God, God bless you. But... Um, and, uh, but this is this Thursday um, at 7 o'clock. Sacrifice, if you can, that we can come here as a body and celebrate uh, Holy Thursday. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. And on Friday, the Lebanon Association will be doing the seven last sayings from the cross at um, uh, Lebanon Church. Now, fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday, and this month, I'm excited about this. Um, we will be the guests at um, First Baptist Claremont for the dedication of their new building. Amen. 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 Anthony and Saritha are my spiritual children, so I'm excited to go and share the word with them. Amen. Somebody may say, why you build such a big building? Same question was probably asked to uh, Noah. Why build this big boat? Amen. We don't see no need for it right now. The best thing to do when God puts something on your heart, don't wait for him to explain why you're doing it. Just go on and God can use a servant like that. Amen. After all, he is God, isn't he? that there's no reason for him to explain everything that he does. Some of you run your homes like that. You're young children. You feel no need to explain everything to them either, do you? Why? Because they wouldn't understand it even if you explained it. Amen. 
Amen. And so I'm excited to be a part of that. And so now we come to the word of God for the morning. Uh, this, this message is really Demetrius, the third option. In fact, it wasn't my option. The Lord gave me the third one. Amen. This wasn't my first choice. I was meditating with the Lord. I wasn't finished with what I was doing. But he just, any of y'all watch baseball? Amen. That's interplay between the pitcher and the catcher. Sometimes the pitcher won't throw a certain thing and then he offers something else. Then, then he eventually pitched the right one. Amen. And so that's sort of the way this has been in the preparation. And so now it's familiar for it, but to how to deliver it with understanding is like um, throwing a curveball across the plate, amen, which starts way out left field and then come back across the plate and so but we are his instrument and you are his people but the word will come from essentially Matthew's gospel it's centered around it's on this Palm Sunday theme Matthew's gospel chapter 21 Our emphasis will be on verses 1 through 3, but we will look at the entire context down to verse 11. It reads as follows. Do you have it? Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, when then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you or opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. Verse 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of this crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Go into the village opposite you or in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. As I said, our focus this morning, this Palm Sunday morning, will be on verses 1 through 3 with supplementary verses from Mark's gospel, his account in Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. The word from heaven, from the Lord to us today, is this, the Lord has need of thee. That's what we want to talk about. The word from heaven, the, the message from the throne of God to us today, you, me, and all of us, the Lord has need of thee. The Lord has need of thee. And not just thee or you, but need of your whole household. That was tied up a donkey and her coat in Matthew's gospel, just a coat in Mark's gospel. 
But the message is this, is that in this season, this era where we are, the Lord is saying he's about ready to do something uh, that, that's been prophesied a long time. It's about to come to fulfillment, but to do it, the Lord have made you and I partners with him. He said, the Lord has need of thee. Turn and look at somebody, even though they look unlikely, tell them, the Lord has need. Amen. Tell somebody, the Lord has need. I'm glad you didn't laugh when you said it, because you probably thought, I don't know how the Lord can use you at all, amen, or how he can use me, but the Lord has need of thee, okay? He says, untie them and bring them to me. If anybody has anything to say about it, just tell them the Lord has need of thee. As he's releasing you today, uh, uh, if anybody has anything to say about it, just say, I heard in my spirit, the Lord has need of me. When the Lord speaks, then we need to respond in the positive. I don't know why these donkeys were tied up where they were along the street. I don't know who tied them up, but whoever tied them up, Harrison, must have believed they had authority to tie them up. Perhaps they owned them, but what if they thought they had authority? But in the midst of that authority, here comes a word from somebody who has all authority that trumps whoever that was and say, if they ask, tell them the Lord, the real Lord. I don't know what you call yourself, but the real Lord. The Lord has need of thee and on the strength of my word, there's going to be no debate. They will release and let them go with you. The devil have bound up some of us today where we can't walk in our destiny, where we can't, where we can't do what we're called to do, where we don't have the joy of our salvation. And so the Lord is saying, this is release day for you. Just take the word in your heart and say that the Lord has, the Lord said he has need of me today. And I, I, see, you know what? And I think sometimes we're tied up where we are. Stuck where we are, caught where we are, because God is holding us for a certain time. If some of us wasn't tied up by our circumstance, we'd be all over the place doing all kinds of stuff. But because we broke, we can't do what we want to do. Because we're sick, we can't fool with Sally. Because we got this going on, we can't do that. And we're just tied up. Somebody said we're just tied up. We're just tied up. If, if we weren't so tied up, some of us would be doing everything that a donkey could do. But, 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 but we're tied up often. We're, tie, we're tied up. Our being tied up is God positioning us for his future use. As you look back over your life, are there some periods in your life when you would have done some stuff but just couldn't get it done? You were just tied up, amen. You had to work. You just got tied up. <laughs> and say, so you will find a donkey tied. Loose them, untie them, and bring them to me. Some years ago, I was reading a book by Rabbi Lapine. He's a scholar. He's a writer. He's a teacher, uh, and he was talking about the word donkey in scripture. He said in the, in the Hebrew, Hebrew being an a expressive language, a musical language, a, a, a symbolic language, sometimes a word can have several meanings. That, that in the Hebrew, sometimes the sound of the word is as important as the Spelling of the word. The sound, remember Sarah was called, Sarah meant princess, but, but the name sounded like, 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 like nag. And so they thought of her as nag. Not that it was a nag, but it sounded like it. 
In the Hebrew language, the sound of a word is as important as the spelling of the word. And also that there's another thing about the words in the Hebrew, he says, he says this is that words that have spelled the same and, and have different meanings, each meaning must be considered in the context of discussion. And so words that sound alike, but for us mean different. One example of this would be, would be blue and blue. B-L-U-E, blue. B-L-E-W, blow. Uh, 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 many words like we call them homonyms or homophones, okay? Now in the Hebrew, they were listening to sound of that and may get something out of context, but even more so, when a word is spelled the same, but have different meanings, like S-O-L-E, soul, soul of your shoe, S-O-L-E, or filet of soul, or, or seafood. To our language, there's no relationship between the soul of your shoe and Dover soul fish. But in the Hebrew language, where the same spelling has different meanings, you must consider both for the context. And it's important that we look at this right now because uh, that's the curveball I'm bringing in here right now. Because what happens is, I know the donkey, the donkey is a symbol, uh, symbol of royalty, symbol of humility, symbol of many things, but also donkey in Hebrew. The same word for donkey in Hebrew is the same word for materialistic or prosperity. So when the rabbi sees donkey, he sees beast of burden, and he sees materialistic prosperity. Y'all hear me? You will find the donkey. All we see is a donkey. You will find the donkey tied. But when the Jews saw it, you will find the, the, the beast of burden. So a donkey, the donkey, donkey is, a, is a, he's noted for his strength. He, he's noted for his determination. And somebody says noted for his stubbornness. But, but his stubbornness is this. You can't hardly get a donkey to do anything that's not within his self-will. A donkey, you, you, can't, you can't make a donkey do anything that he don't want to do. Amen. I know some donkeys myself. You, 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 you just can't get them to do anything. But, 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 but in this donkey, he, he can be a small animal from about 180 pounds up to 1,100 pounds. He's noted for his strength. He can carry heavy loads over long distances. He can walk on rugged terrain. He can cross over mountains without difficulty. The donkey doesn't need a whole lot of water to sustain him, but he can keep on moving. He, he's noted for his strength, but, but watch this. In this story, if I look at it from a parabolic sense, then, 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 then power, strength, and endurance is tied up. Not, not only is my strength tied up, not only is my determination tied up, my, 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 my material possession tied up. And so, and so Jesus comes on the scene and he said, go, go over into the city, town over opposite you, and this is what you'll find. You'll find a donkey and a coat tied up. Now this is what I want you to do. Loose them and bring them to me. Lord, have mercy. And, and if anybody asks you, what are you doing? Just tell them the Lord have need of them. I, I would probably say it like this. If anybody asks them what I'm doing, tell them that's no business to you. And Lord, Lord have mercy. And so to fully understand this text, there's a whole lot going on in this text. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord have need of them. Now watch this. Loose them and bring them to me. 
bring them, bring who? Bring them, the donkey and her coat. Bring them to me. Bring both to me, not, not just, but bring them to me. Notice what he does. He sends two of his disciples, Lord have mercy, to tell them to go, where, go over into the village and you will find. He did not give the specific address. He said, you just go to the village opposite you and this is what you're going to find. How many know when the word of God tells you what you're going to find? Somebody say, you're going to find it. Now, now all you got to do is do what I, just go and you can find whatever he say you're going to find. And you're going to find them right there and they're going to be in the state that you find them right where they are and then you do what I t- bring them in. Now, now there, there's no more power on earth than, than the word of God spoken through the mouth of two agreeing, agreeing servants of God. Lord have mercy. See, these two are in agreement on what the word says do. If God can get just two disciples to go on strength of the word, what, what he says is going to happen. He could have sent one, but he sent two disciples with the understanding. You are in agreement on what I sent you to do. If two or three agree on anything, yeah. he, I will do it for you. Yeah. You struggle with anything, that you need somebody that will agree with you on what you're dealing with. In the text, it speaks of strength, the donkey, determination, uh, reliability, caution. It is a beast of burden, Lord have mercy. It can carry heavy burden. Many, 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 many this morning may be saying, I have no strength. My strength has been taken from me. Could it be that like the donkey in our text, you've been all tied up? Tied up, tied up by life circumstances. Tied up by life situation. Tied up by relationship. Tied up by sickness. Tied up by everything. But this morning in our text, the Lord is saying, loose them and bring them to me, that I have need of them. Now, he's not caring about who tied you up. Not caring about how you got tied up. Not caring about what the thing is that's holding you, but my word is strong enough to release you from whatever has bound you. Can I get a witness that? It may be sickness that don't let you do what you want to do. The Lord is saying today, loose them and let them. Maybe some, some shortfall in your income. Lord is saying, loose them and bring them to me. Maybe some relational issues. The Lord is saying, loose them and bring them to me. This is our day of release today. Aren't you excited today? Loose them and bring them to me. And because of this dual meaning of the word, uh, our ability, our material possessions may be sort of tied up. Anybody say man in here? You, you may not have exactly what you need to do what you need to do. And the Lord told me to tell you it's tied up. Been tied up for a while because I'm going to send for it when I need it. I believe we got some evidence of that similar thing in the book of Daniel. Y'all remember that when Daniel was, was praying and fasting for 21 days for, for, to hear from God, the angel eventually came and told him that, Daniel, we haven't heard you from the moment you first started praying. But the king of Persia, another level of authority of angel, withstood me. But I went over his head. But Michael, another archangel, came down and helped me. And we've come with the answer for what you're praying. Lord, have me. There are many spirits that tie you up. Tie you in knots. Tie your emotions in knots. Tie you up. But the, but, but the Lord, Jesus, there's no power higher than him. If he said, let him go, you're going to be let go. Depression can't hang around. If he said, loose it and let it go. If you have a shortfall in your income, 
You, you know that the, 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 the cattle on a thousand hillside belong to the Lord. Kingdom resources we talked about last week. That whenever God is ready, Lord Hammer, he can loose it. Now watch it. Now loose it not for your own good, but loose them and bring them. Loose them and bring them to me. Bring them to me. Loose them and bring them. So, so now they, they're tied up. They're loosed. They got to be led. And they got to be led to Jesus. Many people want to be loosened but they don't want to be led. They just want to be let go to go back and do whatever it is they were doing. But, 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 but they've been there long enough to know I need to appreciate the one that let me go. You all in Have you ever been in something you can't get out by yourself? Oh, Lord, have mercy. The Lord spoke and said, loose her, loose him, and they let you go. And so the disciples, now watch it, they, they loose them, and these donkeys... This older donkey and the colt just followed right along behind them. Lord, have mercy. And they came to Jesus. And when he came, they brought him to Jesus. And then they took off their cloaks and they put their cloaks on the back of the donkey. Mark, Mark talks about on the fold, the donkey had never been written before. The baby donkey, if you will. Put their coats on the back of it. And then they set Jesus on top of it. Lord, have mercy. And then Jesus began to march into Jerusalem, and, 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 and a shout breaks out. But, but I want you to get some here. Hey, t- they lead the donkeys, untie them, bring them to Jesus. Many of us have hit all of us because we've been untied from something. The Lord released us. Lord, have mercy. And somebody was faithful enough to lead us to Jesus. Aren't you glad about it? And when we got led, to Jesus, look what they did. They put their cloaks on the donkey's back. Donkey didn't even kick. They put their mantle on the donkey's back. The donkey didn't even protest. Even the one that had never been written before. No record, he bucked all those. Just put it on his back and he walked with it. But on top of that mantle, look what he did. And, and he set Jesus on the back of the donkey. Lord have mercy. Now, now what, what does that mean here? Jesus is the word. The word was sent. He sent the word to loosen them. Amen. And disciples brought them back according to the word. And then he took the word and set it on the back of the donkey. And the donkey began to be a cara of the word. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. See, see, the Lord set me free. Uh, Lord have mercy, that I may carry the word. Y'all ain't hearing me. And he, not just preachers carry the word. The Lord set you free. That you may carry, y'all ain't hearing me. That you may, the word Jesus, that you may carry the word. He didn't just set you free just to be set free. He set you free. That you may carry I don't believe y'all hear me. Do I have anybody in the back that will carry the word? Anybody in the back that will carry the You don't need a title, reverend, apostle, or prophet. Just carry. Lord, have mercy. Just carry. Just carry the word. Just carry. I've been set free, George, to carry the word. You've been set free to carry the word. Everywhere you go. The word's going to go. Now watch what. Now the the word is on the back of the donkey that was tied and now set free. The donkey begins to walk in. Now this ain't the first time that Jesus has been in Jerusalem. He'd been in and out many times. But this is the one just before the the, the crucifixion, the last one. He comes in this time and, and a shout breaks out. Lord, the little donkey walking in Jerusalem. He's not bucking. He's not nervous. Because Jesus is on top of him. Can I get a minute? He, he never, he never, y'all know how wild a donkey can be. But as long as Jesus was on him, he had control of him. Can I get a See, some, some of y'all have been wild yourself. But the Lord sets you free. And you can't wild out even when you want to wild out. And so the donkey just keep on walking into the town here. Now watch it, watch it, watch it. They've seen Jesus come in before. And this hadn't happened. The difference is, 
when they see him coming in, riding on the donkey. When they see the donkey carrying the word. Lord have mercy. The shout broke out. Can I get a witness in here? Oh, 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 we're, we're saved by the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel. I'm just another donkey trying to carry the word. Y'all ain't hearing me. People remember when I was tied up, couldn't break free, but, but the Lord set me free. Now, now, I've been carrying the word. Now, why is it? When the donkey comes in, they see scripture. They, they, they see what was prophesied by Zechariah. When, 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 when you and I come in carrying the word, they see the power of God through his word to say, can I get, the donkey comes in and they breaks out in a shout. They take off their coats, throw it down, cut palm branches, throw it down, and they start shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, that son of David. Y'all ain't hear me. Now watch, watch, watch this, watch this. I remember, said, remember what I said, the donkey spoke of power, the donkey spoke of strength, the donkey spoke of prosperity. Now watch this, when Jesus is on top of it, we need him to control the resources that we have. Lord have mercy. Now, why, why, now the Pharisees, uh, there are two ruling classes, Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees were about power, being devout and whatnot. When they saw the donkey, Jesus riding the donkey, they said he's coming to take away our power. When the Sadducees, they were the wealthy rulers, members of the Sanhedrin. When they saw Jesus on the donkey, they saw he's coming to take away our wealth. Y'all ain't hearing me. But, but when the masses saw Jesus riding on the donkey, the lowly donkey, the foal of a donkey, they saw the Savior and started saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna means save now, Jesus. I mean, not tomorrow. Save now, thy son, the, role, the only rightful king of Israel. Save now, thy son of David. Y'all ain't hearing me. The, 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 when the Pharisees got, saw it, they got hot. He wants to take our power because they knew what the donkey meant. When the Sadducees got, saw it, they got hot. They know it meant prosperity. They said he's coming to take away our way of life. There's a whole lot of folk like that right now. If you start messing with their power, oh, they're going to get all indignant. You start taking away their wealth, they're going to get indignant. Now, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. After all, when Jesus got in there, he did go right to the temple. And he started straightening out some stuff. He threw some tables over, started messing up. So it doesn't matter whether they were Sadducees, wealthy, or Pharisees devout, or just masses in the street, they knew that something was about to go down. They knew that the world was about to be turned upside down. And I want to tell somebody here that when, when the Lord unties you, y'all ain't hearing me, sets you free, starts you on a new walk, puts you in his service, and, and sets himself the word on top of you, y'all ain't hearing me, that's going to be a shake-up wherever you walk. Somebody say amen. I'm not what I used to be. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not serving myself. I'm carrying the word of God. Anybody want to carry the word of God today? I'm carrying the word of God. You have been set free to carry the word of God. You've been set free. And so the Lord says... Here's your message. You go loose them. Marlene George Harrison Daisy. There's a servant I want over in the town next to where you live. I want you to go down there and with the word I give you, untie them. There's some religious zealots that have tied them up with stuff ain't necessary. Somebody say man in here. But, 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 but you take my word and you go down in, in, on the city street, find them where they are, and you untie them. 
Now, they didn't ask him how you untie them. They already knew how to untie stuff. You untie them. Don't leave them there. But you untie them, but bring them to church with you. Bring, bring, bring them to me. I, got a, I have need. Can you imagine that Jesus having a need? Lord, have mercy. King of kings, Lord of lords. He, have a need. he has a need for you. He has a need for you. Need of you. Need of you. He has a need of all of you. He wants to untie us. That he can commission us. That he can authorize us. That he can use us. To be a carrier of the word. So on this Palm Sunday. These people, they were so excited. They said, Savior, son of David, save now, not tomorrow, save now. They honored him. They worshiped him. They praised him. They shouted shouts of victory. They praised him. They worshiped him because they saw him riding on a donkey that had been tied up. Some people will see Jesus because they know you were tied up. They know where you were tied up. They know you were messed up. But now they see you with the word all over you, carrying the word. And then they fall down on their knees and they see the word that's on you. And they shout, Savior, 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 save now. So the Palm Sunday message today for all of us, if the Lord has need of thee. You have been released, but the Lord has need of thee. The Lord has need of thee. The Lord has need of thee. He wants you to be a carrier of the word. He is the word. One place said he sat on the donkey. Other place said they set him on the donkey. Amen. Disciples recognize the, the importance of carrying the word. Set him on the donkey. Jesus sat on it. Now look, look what he did. Now to, for, to make them usable, guess what he did? Remember the donkey had two words, two meanings: materialism, prosperity, and burden, beast of burden. He took control over all of that. Once you give him control over everything you have, then men can see the glory of God in the word on you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. Come on, choir. Let's uh, sing a song together. The word from heaven is you have been loosed. You have been set free. The Lord has need of you. He wants you to carry his word. Mm. Mm. And when men see you carrying the word, they start screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save now, Lord. They see the glory of God. By him using ordinary you. Mm. No longer bound. I don't know how long they've been tied up there. But whoever tied them up did the Lord a favor. Because they were there for a time and a purpose and a place. Whatever had bound you. God can bring glory out of that. It works for his purpose in the end. 
Maybe, maybe, Judy, he leaves us tied up there long enough for a lot of passerbys will come by and see us bound up. And then when they see us set free, they say, my God, it's got to be what's on them, the Word. Mm. Mm. I don't know how long you've been in your state, but the Lord said today you'll lose some. Come to me, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, say that with the cry. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm free because some other believer didn't have no better sense to go and do what the Savior said do. Go untie Daniel. Go untie Justin. I'm free. Because some word carol came into my life and took the time to untie what held me. And now we say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. If you're free, you're eligible to be used by him. No longer bow. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Use me, Lord. Send me. Here am I. Mm. No pains or hurt. No pains or debt. No pains or nothing. No, no. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. Is that one today? Is that one here today? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Do you remember the day that you got untied? Do you remember the day when, when, they, when somebody untied you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I remember when the little preacher at my home church, third grade education, drove 50 miles one way to church to preach a word that most of the time didn't make any sense to me, but he took time to untie me with the word. Lord, didn't hear me. And I've been free ever since. Will, will, you, will you be obedient to the Lord? Go over yonder, over the place opposite to where you are, and untie them. Now, people are going to start signaling, but what are you doing here? Well, what, what are you doing with that? Why are you messing with them? Tell them the Lord has need of that one. Somebody shout amen. 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 I believe the Lord is still ministering. We're ready to go. Somebody, the Lord is still ministering to us today. Go over to the village. Opposite to where you are now. You're going to find a donkey and a foal, a whole household that's bound. It's not yours to who bound them, but your assignment is two things. Go untie them and bring them to me. Isn't that evangelism? Your assignment is simple. Go untie them. Speak truth, the word. You ought to hear me. To where they were bound by sin. Untie them and bring them to me. Lord, what if they don't want to follow? The power for them to follow goes with your assignment. You untie, I'll take care of you bringing them to me. Lord, y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? I know it's time to go, but I'm still feeling that. Untie them and bring them to me. 
Untie. Everybody knows somebody that's bound. Untie them. They're not your possession. Don't bring them to you. But bring them to me. And I want to set upon them my word. Y'all remember when Jesus went to the well and the woman was at the well? She was looking for water. Where was he at? He sat over what she needed. You got to go through him to get what you need. He sat on the well. God bless you. Choir, give us a going home selection here. Amen. 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 See you Thursday, 7 o'clock. Come down here, Eric. Let them shake your hand. You haven't been gone a long time, but everybody's been praying for you.